My name is Sandaknin, and I am the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The more money we make, the less we appreciate its relative, respective, and proportional value to others. With very few exceptions, rich people, no matter how stingy, seem to kind of lose touch with the pecuniary reality of the 99% of the population who are poorer than they are. Indeed, to the wealthy, money is not a store of value. It's more a token which allows them to participate in economic and non-economic gains. It's like the chips. Money is like the chips in life's casino. And I call this process of desensitization to the value of money personal inflation. Because precisely like classic inflation, as far as these affluent persons are concerned, personal inflation thwarts the price signal, distorts the efficient allocation of economic resources. Personal inflation also misinforms rich people's decisions and adversely affects their motivation to work, save, and invest. Rich people, therefore, have an inflationary mindset. They prefer to spend their capital, but owing to the magnitudes involved, they are forced to hold on to the bulk of their money, it tied down as it is in assets, both ten tangible and financial. They wish to consume, they have an inflationary, and to have an inflationary effect, but actually they end up saving, and this creates a deflationary outcome. Now let's consider poor folk. Poorer people have a deflationary state of mind. They would like to hold on to their money, but they are forced to spend most of it, or even all of it, not to mention avail themselves of additional credits and loans. So poor people wish to save and have a deflationary effect, but they end up consuming and having an inflationary effect. So all economic players in the marketplace wind, in, wind up acting irrationally against their innermost as well as expressed wishes and preferences. To reiterate, poor people would like to save, deflationary, but end up consuming, inflationary. Rich people would like to consume, inflationary, but they end up saving and investing, deflationary. This gulf between the desires and actions of all economic agents is the main source of instability and uncertainty in the capitalist system, based as it is on wealth transfer from the many to the few, and its accumulation in the hands of the latter. So what are the effects of these discrepancies in the perception of money between the rich and the rest of us? How is this psychological gap indeed this? How is it manifested in economic expectations and in one's grasp of one's purchasing power based on streams of future income? How does the price signal react to income inequality? The larger the disparities between rich and poor, the greater the share of national wealth held by the rich, the more deflationary the economy. Rich people consume only a tiny fraction of their wealth the rest of the money is tucked away in the vaults of financial institutions, buried in real estate, or hanging on the wall in the form of artwork. Rich people's money is effectively taken out of circulation, and its velocity drops precipitously. Admittedly, rich people's savings do serve as a source for investments, but only when the transmission mechanisms of the financial system are intact and when trust is reasonably high in the economy. In times of crisis and recession, financial institutions tend to be rendered dysfunctional and trust a base. Redistribution by schemes of progressive taxation do amelior ameliorate, does ameliorate some of these deflationary effects of income inequality, but can never counter it completely. Income inequality creates crises and recessions, and then perpetuates them.